Can we generate electricity from viruses? Uh, doesn't seem possible, but Sung Uk Lee is going to now come out and explain it to us. Please welcome him. Hi, good evening, everybody. So today I'm going to introduce a totally new way to generate the electricity that the title says that using the viruses. So when we take a look at the viruses, we don't have uh, much good images, which is uh, viruses usually make you sick or ill. Some of the computer viruses hack your computers and then destroy all your important data. <laughs> so that is a kind of the problematic viruses. But there is a many different type of the viruses. We can still use it for a really good purpose, such as delivering the drugs or cure the disease. So in our laboratory, we use a non harmful very useful viruses, and then trying to design a new type of the materials. But they have a very amazing uh, characteristic that no other material have, which is uh, viruses are usually very easy to amplify. So therefore, if we have one viruses and mix them together with a host cell, we can easily end up with a trillions or zillions of uh, viruses. At the same time, they produce exactly identical, identical copies that we first design. And depending on how we make it, these uh, copies, we can also induce the mutation you know, very quickly. So therefore, we can evolve these materials very quickly and then design a new properties. And most of them have uh, exactly the uh, same shape. So therefore, we can easily put them together in a self-assembled manner to design a new type of the devices. So therefore, using this type of the characteristics of the viruses, we design a new electric energy generating viruses. The working principle is called the piezoelectricity. So piezoelectricity is defined by the convergence between the mechanical forces and electric energies. So piezin is basically means that press in Greek. So therefore, some of the material, especially piezo piezoelectric material, have a charge which is balanced very well in some specific order of structures. And then when we put a pressure in this type of the materials, we can basically break their balance of the charge and then induce some of the partial positive and negative charge here. So therefore, in this case, we can induce the potential through the pressures. There is many different types of the piezoelectric materials already utilized in our daily life, such as our wrist, um, the watch. They have uh, piezoelectric materials. So therefore, if we put the battery, they just uh, ticks uh, one every one second and then move your needle uh, to measure your time. And there is also other many different types of the piezoelectric materials, especially in this uh, Netherlands. They use it very amazing purpose. Basically, we can dance around and can operate all this brightening in this sustainable dance floor. So therefore, we convert <laughs> your bodily movement as electrical energies. So therefore, these materials are very useful. But there is some of the problem, which is uh, these materials are very expensive to produce. At the same time, they are composed of the many harmful chemicals there. So therefore, it will be very useful that non-toxic and then very cheap to make this type of the material will be useful. So fortunately, most of the biological materials are piezoelectric, such as the DNA or protein. But more fortunately, so the viruses that we are using called the amsotin bacteriophage have also piezoelectric property because there's a DNA inside and then they have uh, some protein that have a charge that coiled all these surfaces. Especially the DNA is a negatively charged. So therefore, this protein is somehow evolved to produce plus charge inside and negative charge outside, and then coiled 3,000 times of these materials. So therefore, when we use this type of the materials that have plus and, mi uh, plus and minus charge, and then mechanically deform, Basically, we break all these balance, charge balance, and then now we induce the, some of the potential energy from these viruses. So that is our hypothesis. So therefore, in order to prove this concept, we use a very special a microscope that called the piezo responsive force microscope that have the long sticks, and then we touch this nanoscale uh, sub substance in a very specific manner. During the time, we apply the electric field so therefore, we can induce some of the mechanical force in these viruses. Depending on mode, we can measure their kind of the pushing up or downward, or so we can also measure some of the force that generated from out of plane of these materials. So using these specific microscopy techniques, we first prove that 
our viruses have a piezoelectric phenomenon using these type of the images. So therefore, when we scan through the, these virus surfaces, so now we can begin to see the white or dark type of the string pattern, which is that these viruses are pushing this needle to upward or downward. Well, in these images, in the virus area, they push this needle in the out of the plane way. So therefore, we first prove that the virus they have a piezoelectric properties. But another amazing feature of these materials are they have uh, identical copies and then behave like this kind of the match stick. So therefore, when we have a really low concentration of these viruses, there's a no order. But when we have uh, enough concentration like this match stick, now all of these viral particles are self-assembled them together and then generate the order structures. So therefore, when we put this type of the ordered materials in between two electrodes, now when we push these materials, they begin to generate the electric states. So therefore, this is a picture, first picture that operate the microelectronic devices using virus-based electric cities. That here is a virus, surface, uh, virus films, and then we press, and then basically connected with uh, this liquid crystal display, and then we power these devices to show number one. So that is a very exciting Eureka moment, so which is a very hard to believe. So this is a May 2012 that we produce very small amount of this uh, current, which is of five nano amperes and around 300 millivolt scale. And last two years, we working very hard and then engineer these viruses and then improve the physical structure of when we fabricate these devices. So therefore, now we improve the quality, the performance of these devices more than 20 times. So therefore, similar devices when we push. So now we can spell out the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, which is uh, I paid by the LBL. So therefore, now we envision that we can use similar type of the devices. And then somehow in the future, five or 10 years later, we can create the personalized electric generated that mount on our shoes. So therefore, whenever we're walking around, we can produce clean and green energies. Most importantly, most of the conventional piezoelectric uh, materials are very toxic, but these materials are environmentally friendly. At the same time, it's biocompatible. So therefore, we envision that same materials can be mounted on our heart or our kind of the pulsation site. So therefore, we can generate all our bodily movement as uh, electric energies. So in order to do so, we still need to understand what is the basic science behind these biological materials. At the same time, we need to improve the power performance of these virus-based electronics. Thank you very much.